Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Hey, wildlings. Relationships are funny. How people view them, treat them, and in some cases use them can be funnier. And not in the haha that's hilarious kind of way. More the ow that's my spleen, please don't eat me kind of way. Tonight's story, Arania, by T with Crowley. <sighs> we met on OK Cupid. I don't like admitting that, but unfortunately there's no time left for shame or reputation. I'd just been through a pretty rough breakup and I didn't feel like the whole bar pickup routine yet, but browsing around for potential rebounds on the internet meant that I could just continue sitting at home in my boxer shorts, living on Jack Daniels and frozen pizza. We've all been there, right? So there she was. Brunette. Great figure. Fierce eyes and a... <laughs> and a snarling smile. Her screen name was Arania, and she was a beacon of attractiveness in a sea of otherwise mediocrity, at best. Her written profile was a bit awkward, though. Uh, it seemed filled out in a rush, hardly giving any info. The only thing that she did elaborate on was sex. She made it really clear that this was a big priority, making me think that this was either a fake profile or that of somebody with nymphomaniac tendencies. But those pictures... God, I, I clearly remember her sitting straight up with her legs crossed, naked but obscured by her long hair and shadows, mockingly looking straight at the camera. Writing this is the only way I can get my mind off what's coming. So forgive me if I digress, but escaping in this writing is really all I've got left. Actually, I didn't even feel like messaging her. If it wasn't a fake profile, she probably got hundreds of messages from desperate guys anyway. Uh, now, I'm not a bad-looking guy, and... This whole internet dating thing was just a convenient way to get back in the saddle. But still, she seemed a bit out of my league. I was really wondering why the fuck she needed to be on a site like this anyway. Then, she messaged me. Yeah, I saw you checked out my profile. You seem different than the other guys. Wanna meet up? Nia. Really, this easy. A small pinch of distrust gnawed at me. And then I took a look at the overflowing ashtrays and the whiskey bottles littering my room. I scratched my two-week-old beard. Ah, hell. We met up in a bar. Um, it would have been much better for this story if it was a seedy place, but it, it wasn't. Neither was it really swanky, it was just one of those regular neighborhood bars, one that was convenient for both of us. It didn't matter though, even if we'd met in a sewage processing plant, I'd still have been completely smitten. As soon as she stepped in, every guy in the bar turned their head. I'm not exaggerating here, all of the guys turned and looked at her and followed her with their heads. As she walked up to me and kissed me on the cheek, I felt like the coolest dude in the world at that moment. I hear sirens, could that finally be? No, they passed. I don't know exactly how much time has passed, but I'm pretty sure that I've been reported missing by now. I hope so anyway. So, there she was, tall, low-cut black dress, eyeliner around almond eyes that made her face somehow even 
more feral. That snarling smile, bearing perfectly straight teeth. And the way she smelled, my god, that smell. It was overwhelming, musky, animal, but I never met anyone who smelled that good. Every time she moved her arm to emphasize a word or raise her glass of wine, I caught a whiff of it, and it drove me wild. Every little whiff of that mesmerizing scent got me closer to a primal state of just pure lust. We talked for maybe an hour. Uh, she was a good conversationalist, but there was still something awkward in the way she talked. It seemed like she had no interest at all in regular topics such as music or art or movies. She was very quick in steering the conversation away from that. Back to me. She seemed extremely curious about my last relationship and my history with women. I told her some funny stories about awkward moments that I'd had with women, at which she laughed before pressing on with the questions. I have never talked that much about sex on a first date, ever, and she greedily ate up every single story. We went to her place that same night. I offered to take her to dinner, but she said we could order in. Knowing perfectly well what that meant, I hastily paid the tab and basically hijacked the first taxi available. As soon as we got in, she was all over me. If she hadn't had her hand down my pants, I might have taken notice of the address that she gave the cab driver. Uh, if she hadn't been smothering me <laughs> with aggressive kisses the entire trip, I might have known where the hell I am right now. But smart like that. As soon as we were inside, passionately making out the whole way from the cab to the front door, she offered me a drink. Her apartment was bare. All the blinds were closed and she hardly had any furniture. No pictures on the wall either. I didn't think much of it then. Thought she was probably one of those minimalists. The cocktail she brought me was refreshing, kind of like a sidecar, really sour and tangy. But it was delicious at the same time. Then she jumped me, again. She threw me on the couch, one of the few pieces of furniture that she owned, and before I knew it, we were ravaging each other. I I'm not writing this for you to get your kicks, so I won't go into details, but it was hard. It was mean. Her scent unleashed all of my primal desires. It was heaven. Until the room started spinning. Until our movements got me into a trance and I started tripping out. She was straddling me, sitting on top of me and holding me down. I couldn't move. And then the flashes started. Her perfect body started distorting just for milliseconds at a time. There were too many black eyes. There were spindly, chitinous legs. Sometimes her body seemed to be made up of too many sections. And always that smell so mesmerizing at first. It became rotten and dusty like, uh, like flies that had been dying for too long in a windowsill. Her nails on my chest started to hurt, but she was still riding me grimly with determination. <sighs> the flashes became quicker, stroboscopic. She started changing before me, legs, eyes, mandibles, chitin, flesh, teeth. I was horrified. I wanted to cry, gag, get out of there, but she had me pinned, and I came. As soon as I did, she started laughing. A horrible, triumphant laugh while I lay sobbing beneath her. But suddenly the laugh made place for a snarl. A disgusted, disappointed grunt. She screamed that scream. That horrible, animal, otherworldly scream. I still shudder when I think about it. 
She looked down at me with fierce hatred in her eyes and started to maul me. She beat me black and blue. I think she even broke my nose. I was covered in such a flurry of punches, bites, and scratches that I passed out. And then I woke up in this room. This, uh... This room filled with human bones. This windowless room with those strange, dried-up, leathery, egg-shaped things. Egg-shaped things with holes in them, like something had crawled out some time ago. I can hear her scuttling outside. Once or twice a day she comes in to bring me a sandwich, some water. Sometimes she sits with me and strokes my hair softly singing a terrible song that makes me die a little inside. I think I know what she wants from me. I think I know why she's keeping me alive. I must have been here for nearly a month now. It'll be that time again soon. I wonder how long it takes for her to find out that I'm infertile. So maybe the next time you get those digits, or give them out, put a little effort into reading the room. The other funny thing about relationships is how much effort we do put into being stupid and ignoring things in order to get them. So stay scary, my wildlings. Remember, to think with the big brain and <laughs> make the most of your nights.